solving these problems. Um, where we are with JBro Fuzz 1.1 versions later, uh, some scripting capability and roadmap. So, who in here knows what JBro Fuzz is or does? One person at the back. Two. Wow. Okay, so JBro Fuzz is a fuzzing tool that um, has been put together for the needs of penetration testing. So the basic principle is to be able to control uh, the host, the header, the content, the body, the field, and fuzz those ver as variables using a number of, of payloads. This tool uh, came out of penetration testing and has been uh, in development for approximately now 20 uh, 22 months, roughly, give or take. So, what, what does it do? If I just bring up, this is the, the jar file. It's written in Java, there's an executable, there's an installer, etc. Um, okay, so the basic principle is uh, that we have uh, the URL where we control the protocol, uh, the, the host that we want to fuzz, the request. Here we add our payloads and the output is logged at the very bottom. So if we were to just uh, send a single request to the OWASP website, provided we have an internet connection, which is extremely slow, what we are sending is over HTTPS. So this is uh, an HTTP request to OWASP of basically this and what we got back, okay, what we got back was an I.O. error because the wireless internet connection <laughs> isn't working. But the basic principle is that you, you have the, the request header fields here. Um, you put a number of request header fields onto the wire. You track the responses and you graph the output, etc. So in, in terms of uh, really, really basic uh, fuzzing capabilities, let's say that you had a, a web server that you were allowed to attack and you wanted to test the version, the HTTP version number for integer overflows, how you would do something like this is you would add, you would go through the list of uh, available payloads and I'll come onto this. Um, so let's say that we, we'd be testing uh, for, for example, uh, buffer overflows, so this will send all these payloads, which are a bunch of A's, nothing really complicated there. So it would actually replace the one one value with uh, the buffer overflow category. So if I click send here, again, we're going to get exceptions because the internet connection, ah, okay, so the internet is up. So, so this is just putting a bunch of A's on the wire at the required field. Obviously it gets more complicated than that, but that's the basic principle. Request, header, any variables that you might have, put these on the wire, and be able to send more than 2 to the 16 plus 1 A's onto um, the, the OWASP website. Um, and if we just quickly look at the graph of this in terms of file size, for example, so these are all the requests we sent. Obviously we're sending a ton of A's and they're coming back. This is why this has gone back uh, up. Um, so in brief, we're trying to fuzz a web service or a server uh, that's listening on either uh, a normal connection or uh, an SSL connection. And we're recording the responses and then we're graphing them, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what JBro Fuzz does in brief. And, and this is how it does it. So this talk, OK, so uh, in terms of uh, what we're actually trying to achieve from this, well, you can easily select these variables uh, that you want to fuzz and replace the cookie values, check the response types, brute force post and get if you've got any parameter values, et cetera. Uh, check for any unsupported header fields, graph the results. And you can also script this up. OK. So this is the basic 101. Now, in terms of the actual workflow, well, what we're doing is we are 
pretty much selecting the payloads that we want to go through here. And there's categories, and we'll talk about this. So we're selecting the fuzzers, we're sending the requests, collecting the responses, and this is typically the place where we spend all our time. That's an iterative process. We're revisiting the, uh, the request and the responses, and we're comparing the results that we get. That's the basic concept 101 of fuzzing over port 80, well, any port, but uh, a web service or a web server. So if you were to build a fuzzer today, in my opinion, you would need three things. You would need uh, a stable and easy to use user interface. This is why most of the fuzzing tools or some uh, of the fuzzing tools out there still use command line. It is the most stable user interface. Um, you need a solid fuzzing engine and a lot of work has gone into that particular section in uh, relation to the OWASP testing guide and in relation to what's, what's a fuzzing engine? How, how do I define and group together the payloads that I want to send uh, into meaningful categories? And you need to address the issue of, well, you're potentially breaking the protocol specification through the fuzzing request that you're sending, i.e. in HTTP, you can't actually send an HTTP forward slash A. That's an invalid version number. And quite often, the APIs don't allow you to do that. And I'll spend more time on this. So the likely problems that you're going to encounter, and this was roughly the situation that we were in in terms of development uh, around early 2007 is that, well, writing a user case for uh, a fuzzer, i.e. what it does, is not actually a, a science project. It's not something that you can give to undergraduate students and they can go away and implement it. Maybe they can, but it's not textbook because there's no definition, and especially a year ago when the fuzzing books um, for the industry were far, far less, th there's no real defined process of what fuzzing is. If you look at the definition, you're sending random data to a service, a prompt, um, and you're recording the responses. Well, the data is not that random quite often. You know roughly what you're sending, um, and you know what you're expecting back, but how do you define that? So how do we solve the, the, the problem of the, the user interface? Well, we asked the OWASP leaders. Unfortunately, we got very, very contradicting uh, results there. So let me give you some examples. If, if you ask Dennis Cruz what he wants from a fuzzer, uh, it pretty much resembles the burp suite. Um, and who in here is familiar with the burp suite? Good. Um, and if you ask Dan Kultberg, he'd just say, well, I just want to copy paste the get URL and just go through a number of fuzzers. So there was some email correspondence there and we went through all those responses. Unfortunately, they were contradicting. So you can't do one and the other together. Different people in this um, discipline have different ideas of what fuzzing actually is. You're going to have to rewrite the GUI components because, well, you don't, you, you want control over this huge data 